Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on anemia in pregnancy. Anemia in pregnancy is the most common medical disorder in pregnancy. More than 50% of the cases are due to iron deficiency anemia. So this means that more than 50% of the anemia is preventable with proper management. So, anemia in pregnancy is defined as the hemoglobin level less than 11 gram per deciliter, as stated in WHO definition. The severity of anemia based on WHO, mild anemia is 9 to 11 gram per deciliter, the hemoglobin level, moderate is 7 to 9, and if the hemoglobin level is less than 7 gram per deciliter, it is considered as severe anemia. These are the target hemoglobin levels in pregnancy. In first trimester, target to be at, at least 11 gram per deciliter. Second and third trimester, target at least 10.5 and postpartum target at least 10 gram per deciliter. The causes of anemia in pregnancy include physiological anemia due to hem hemodilution, nutritional causes like iron deficiency anemia which is the most common cause, or other deficiency like folate and vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. Anemia of chronic birth loss, for example, mothers who have repeated abortions or closely spaced pregnancies, bleeding gums, ulcers, menorrhagia before conception or any womb infestation. Hemolytic anemia such as thalassemia, malaria or drug-induced anemia can also cause anemia in pregnancy. Other causes include aplastic anemia due to drugs or idiopathic and also myeloproliferative disorders such as leukemia. These are the effects of anemia on pregnancy on the mother and the fetus. On the mother, it can increase the susceptibility to infections, increase the risk of postpartum hemorrhage or placenta eruption, and also increase the risk of heart failure. Whereas for fetal effects include intrauterine growth restriction, preterm delivery, and even delayed in psychomotor or mental development of the baby. The clinical features of anemia in pregnancy include shortness of breath on exertion, fatigue, palpitation, dizziness, and headache, whereas the signs include pale conjunctiva, angular stomatitis, koilonychia, where there is spoon-shaped nails, atrophic glossitis, tachycardia, or floor murmur may be heard. To investigate for the cause of the anemia, we can do full blood count, expect to see a low hemoglobin level, low MCV and MCH, and the reticular sac count should be normal. Peripheral blood smear to look for the morphology of the red blood cells, serum ferritin level to rule out iron deficiency anemia, it is usually low in iron deficiency anemia. Hemoglobin electrophoresis can be used to diagnose thalassemia, and still for occult blood if the hemoglobin didn't rise af even after treatment. Let's move on to the management of anemia in pregnancy. So usually, all women should receive a routine hematinic supplementation, like iron tablets, once pregnant. If they are diagnosed with anemia, a trial of therapeutic dose of hematinics should be given. Take a detailed history to look for the cause of anemia, especially if they are already anemic during booking which is the first clinic visit after pregnancy. So if it is decided to give them oral iron tablets, it should be taken on an empty stomach. Make sure that there is counseling done for the patient, they know how to take the tablets. So it should be taken on an empty stomach together with vitamin C to increase the iron absorption. Avoid taking iron together with food that reduce the absorption of iron, such as tea, coffee, milk, calcium or antacids. In women whose hemoglobin does not respond to the hematinics, or the hemoglobin is very low, which is less than 9 gram per deciliter, we should proceed with further investigations mentioned just now. So this is a chart showing the management of anemia in pregnancy, depending on how severe the anemia is. It is divided into the white, green, yellow, and red pathway. So white pathway is if the hemoglobin level is more than 11 gram per deciliter, we give the routine hematinics. Repeat the hemoglobin level at 28 weeks and 36 weeks to look for any anemia. 
The green pathway is if the hemoglobin level is between 9 and 11 gram per deciliter, which is slightly below the normal range. So the treatment gives dose of hematinics, and then we repeat the full blood count to check the hemoglobin levels, depending on how many weeks of gestation. If it is less than 28 weeks of gestation, we repeat every 4 weeks. If more than 28 weeks of gestation, we will repeat every 2 weeks to check the hemoglobin levels. So if there is still no rise in hemoglobin, even after giving treatment, we have to check the compliance of the patient, ask whether they are compliant to the medications given. If they are compliant, then we will have to do the other investigations just now to look for other causes of the anemia. So next is the yellow pathway, where the hemoglobin level is between 7 and 9 gram per deciliter. So treatment dose of hematinics ensure the compliance do investigations and repeat full blood count in two weeks and review the investigations. Check whether the hemoglobin levels rise after giving the medications. And also look for other possible causes of the anemia. Whereas the last pathway is a red pathway. This is severe anemia where the hemoglobin is less than 7 gram per deciliter. We have to repeat full blood count. Oh, first, we have to refer to the ONG specialist. Repeat full blood count two weeks after completing parenteral iron or blood transfusion, where we give the iron through injection and blood transfusion. So this is the algorithm. We can take a look at this algorithm for management of anemia in pregnancy. So let's look at the most common cause of anemia in pregnancy, which is iron deficiency anemia. We have to ensure the compliance of the medications and also the proper method of taking iron supplements, which is taking it with an empty stomach. If the patient is unable to tolerate oral iron tablets, we can consider an early change to parenteral iron, which is through injection. So this parenteral iron is only given in those clinics or hospitals who have medical officer, medications and equipment for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Parenteral iron is contraindicated in first trimester or in those who have history of allergic reaction to parenteral iron, any acute or chronic infection, or chronic liver disease. So these are the choices of treatment, which includes elemental iron, which is the iron tablets, parenteral iron through injection, or blood transfusion. And I have listed here the indications, the side effect, and also the contraindications. So the indications for blood transfusion is if the hemoglobin level is still less than 7, still very severe anemia, even if it is already at the 36 weeks of gestation. So we have to give blood transfusion to rise, raise the hemoglobin levels. Or other indications like there, is symptoms, there are symptoms or causing massive obstetric hemorrhage. We have to give blood transfusion. And for side effects, oral iron tablets might cause gastrointestinal intolerance whereas parenteral iron might cause pain at sight or abscess and other systemic side effects. Contraindications are listed over here as well. So elemental iron is contraindicated in patients who have stomach ulcers or colon ulcers or diverticular disease, whereas for parenteral iron, those who have history of allergy, chronic infection and chronic liver disease, we cannot give parenteral iron. These are some of the examples of iron tablets, such as ferrous fumarate and ferrous sulfate. And zinc copper is also a commonly seen medication, where there are the combination of five supplements, which includes ferrous fumarate, folic acid, vitamin C, vitamin B12, and zinc sulfate. Whereas for parenteral iron, the commonly seen ones are iron dextrin and iron sucrose. So if the patient is a thalassemia patient, if diagnosed as thalassemia carrier, we have to check the ferritin levels and give routine hematinic supplements if the serum ferritin is less than 30 ng per ml. If more than 30, do not give iron supplements, we give only folic acid. Also remember to screen her partner for thalassemia and counsel them accordingly to, uh, for future pregnancies. For delivery, women with hemoglobin less than 10 gram per deciliter, which is low, should deliver in hospital with IV access, group safe and whole, 
and also active management of third stage of labor to prevent excessive hemorrhage during delivery. Postpartum management, continue the supplements for at least one month postpartum. That's all for this video, thank you.